Hello, welcome to this video, which is a rather strange mix of subjects. It's kind of a book review and a role-playing game recommendation. So let's start with the book, first of all. This is Gemini Cell by Mike Cole, and it's got a fascinating premise. The idea, or rather, let's start here. It's set in the modern world, or perhaps next year. It's, it's very close to our modern day. And the premise is that magic starts appearing in the world. You don't need to know why. All that matters is that individuals are suddenly gaining the power of magic. So somebody can suddenly find they can fly. Others find that they're able to cast lightning bolts from their fingers. Others can um, do pyromancy, that sort of thing. Other people can modify their own body or other people's. They can do healing. So actual magic starts manifesting, but it's, it's pretty rare. So very few people are manifesting this power. And of course, the, the government sees it as a potential risk to themselves and also as a weapon to use against their enemies. So that's, that's the world we live in. Now, this book, as far as I can tell, is a prequel to a series of books. Um, which starts here, Shadow Ops Control Point. I think the series is called Shadow Ops. Um, and this basically follows a character who starts to manifest and he gets picked up and grinds through the system. And in this book, he's... How to phrase this? Um, he becomes a magical soldier. <laughs> as odd as that sounds. Um... It's military science fiction, effectively. If you can imagine that this magic is really science fiction. It's not. It's actually magic. But you, you can think of it in those terms. These people are able to do extraordinary things. Um, and this, I think, is a three-book series, this uh, Shadow Ops one. Uh, I've read the first two and was thoroughly absorbed with them. Really enjoyed them. And then let's get back to Gemini Cell. This one, I think, is a prequel. Because in the Shadow Ops series, the government is set up. They've got um, propaganda going in the streets, telling people to turn in magical individuals. Um, and they've got like a training base for training these magical individuals into becoming soldiers. They're basically given a choice. They can become soldiers or be, you know, executed, removed. Um, a lot of magical individuals just disappear, basically. But this is a prequel to where they're all fully organised. It appears to be set slightly earlier when the government is just starting to get a handle on it. And it follows a Navy SEAL. Um, it opens up, as you might expect, with a military fiction, with uh, gun combat. I, I believe it's an assault on a ship. <clears throat> anyway, it's really well written. It's very exciting fiction. And, as I say, the magic elements just adds to it. So in this book, it's, the lead character dies right near the beginning. Um, but then he wakes up. And what's happened is his body has been transported to one of these early training facilities, as it were, for magic. And another magical individual has pulled a, what he calls a djinn or a demon from the other world, whatever that is, and merged it into this dead body. And what's happened is that that demon can make the body work. But our character, our, our protagonist, who was that Navy SEAL, his, his spirit, his essence, is still in there. And between them, the demon and the man, they start working as operatives for the government, doing secret missions. And it, it's really well done. There's this constant fight between the demon and the man's spirit for control of the body. If the demon takes over, basically he starts growing fangs, horns erupt, he, he grows spikes and turns into an actual monster. But when the man takes control, he can roll that back and become a man again. One of the fascinating things, you see him covered in armour here, is that he can be shot to pieces and he, he won't die. Um, but of course, each time they break a bone, he becomes less able to run, for instance. You break a thigh, you can't run. Now, the demon can get over that to some extent, but he's not alive. He's not self-repairing. So if he breaks a bone, they need to come and stick a rod into his leg to hold it together. 
They need to keep him roughly in cold storage so that he doesn't just rot away. It's it's really amazing and it's very exciting. It's very military. It's very gritty. And there's just this this edge over the top, basically, of this magical influence. It's a fascinating book. Utterly recommended. But what I want to add to this was I got thinking to myself, how would I role play? What system could I use? What would I use to role play this mixture of magic and military um, I keep going to say military science fiction, but it's not. It's military fiction plus a bit of magic. Um, and I actually came up with the system to use here. I didn't write it. I found it. Cepheus Modern. It's a 2D6 based uh, system. It's based on the Cepheus engine, which itself is based on the classic Traveller system. Um, so all you need is a couple of D6s and you can get straight into play. You don't need a whole collection of dice. So it's really easy to pull people unfamiliar with role playing into it because you can just give them a character sheet. There you go. Have it pre-filled. And here's two dice that you're going to be completely familiar with. So it's it's quite attractive in that regard. So Cepheus Modern, written by Stout Hearted Games, is primarily aimed at playing a modern scenario. However, they do have additional stuff in here if you want to add that frisson of the strange or magical even to your game. So let's just take a quick look. I've made a note of a few pages we can look at here. So page eight um, is interesting because you've got these difficulty numbers for achieving a task. So, you know, if it's formidable, it's going to be 12 plus. So you're going to roll the dice, add your skills, that sort of thing. Um, I think this system also uses stat bonuses, but... I found that quite amazing. The old traveller system used to just use an 8 plus system, whereas here they've got the variable levels, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's go have a look at one of the templates for building a character. So here on page 14 are all the tables you need to roll up an army character. So you can create a military one. There's also stuff for Navy and Air Force in here. And if you've played Traveller or Cepheus Engine, this is all going to look very familiar because, well, that's what it's based on. But because it's military sci-fi or military fiction, if we go to page 29, you can see you've got nice, nice table, very simple to use for the various types of weapon. And as well as these sort of handheld weapons, there's also stats in here for support weapons and grenades and all that military great stuff. Um, let's roll on to page 34 as well, where, of course, you can find the stats for vehicles. And who doesn't want to drive an Abrams? Let's face it, driving your character around in a main battle tank, that's going to be great. And again, that fits straight into this fiction that Mike Cole's created, because in that, magical people, they're still people. They drive around in cars. Some fly, but most of them drive around in cars or in tanks, even. But as I said, this this game goes a bit beyond that, and that's why, and this is why it fits in with the the whole idea of having the magic. We've got a sci psionics section here where they talk about the various psionic powers that your character may have, and again, that could just be a different manifestation of magic. But even if you don't want to do that, this system also covers actual magic. So I jump to sixty five, fantasy and magic in modern campaigns. So. Can I just step through a couple of pages here? So it talks about using magical powers, training in it, the various, quote, sp skills or spells you can have, that sort of thing. It's all in here. Sorcery, transmogrification, transportation. And this covers all the sort of stuff that is in that book. And I, basically, I just think this system is, is the perfect fit. If you want to go to Mike Cole's Gemini cell, or to his series for Shadow Ops. You want to play with lots of guns, you want to be in a military structure carrying out those super duper secret missions, then Cepheus Modern is probably the game you want to use. All right, that's all for now. See you next time.